Hey there people, how are you doing? So, today we have the photo comparison between the iPhone 12 and S20 Plus. In US, you know, in terms of the global launch prices, the iPhone 12 is fairly inexpensive as compared to the S20 Plus, but in terms of the prices in India, it appears that it is very similar in terms of the launch prices. At this moment, however, the S20 Plus is definitely cheaper than the iPhone 12, which is, once again, the reversal of prices is just absurd and just comical at this point. But nonetheless, I just want to see if the iPhone 12 can truly show its worth in India, or once again, maybe the S20 Plus will show its worth in terms of the global launch prices. So first image, and this is an ultra wide, broad daylight shot. And it's interesting because as we'd expect, the S20 Plus has slightly higher contrast and slightly higher vibrance. And as a matter of fact, I do like how it is handling the gradient in the sky. You can see there is that slight sunset glow, like very early sunset. It, it looks very nice indeed. The iPhone is subduing all of that a little bit. It looks a lot more natural, most definitely. That is how iPhones are. But the one reason that I'm not calling this one a tie and handing the win to the S20 Plus is that upon zooming in even a little bit, you can see on the road, there is a ton of over sharpening artifacts and just the amount of grain and noise, it just does not look appealing. Now moving on to the main camera and here the similar differences lie, just the over sharpening problem that we had in the ultra wide is completely negated this time around. And to be honest, I kind of like the S20, not just because of the sky, but also because it does happen to have a little bit more vibrance than, I don't know, it suits my taste a little. But to be honest, it really depends on personal preference. So I'm just gonna call this one a tie. But the moment we start zooming in, now this is two times zoom and the S20 Plus, although it does not have a fully fledged optical zoom setup, it has a very high resolution 64 megapixel camera. And that can be used to crop in and it can be clearly seen that that amount of resolution in broad daylight, it really plays in to give very good amounts of detail, especially in two times zoom and a little bit above. The iPhone standalone, not bad, but clearly the S20 Plus is slightly better. Moving on to four times zoom on both, and I don't think I have to say anything other than the fact that the S20 Plus is easily the better one of the two over here. Moving on to 10 times zoom on both, and well, we can't even do that on the iPhone. I had to crop in separately, but yeah, I mean, if that's the quality you're gonna get, then why even bother cropping in, right? So yeah, 10 times zoom, completely unusable on the iPhones. It goes to show why they do not even have the option in the camera app. It, you can only go up to five times zoom. On the S20 Plus, however, it is very good comparatively, but I do think the Note 20 Ultra and other cameras with periscope zooms and optical zooms, they have much higher quality 10 times zooms. So yeah, do check out that comparison because there things get interesting actually. Now moving on to indoors, fantastic lighting and I say fantastic because I used a full-blown studio light and over here there are two differences in particular between the two. Firstly, the iPhone 12 has much lower contrast and better skin tones while the contrast is a lot more substantial on the S20 Plus but I do not like the skin tones as much. They're good, they're alright but I definitely prefer the skin tones on the iPhone. I would like something in between the two, ideally, but if I were forced to pick one of the two, I might go with the S20 Plus, I guess, because it has slightly better contrast, but to be honest, I'm not a huge fan of either, at least not in this situation. Now, this is an ultra-wide shot in indoors lighting, and as you'd expect, the iPhone 12 is giving the most natural-looking shot. It looks exactly like it did to my eyes while the S20 Plus is slightly improving it. Now, in this case at least, given how the shot looks, I prefer the S20 Plus because although not as perfectly realistic, it still does a better job in exposing the shadows and giving us slightly more detail. It handles the white balance well enough. I do prefer the S20 Plus overall. Now, this is the main camera shot, and to be honest, I had initially thought I would see some differences, but it appears that since the S20 Plus has a larger sensor, and with iPhone 12's deep fusion, the differences between the two in terms of detail and noise reduction, it just cancels out, kind of. But 
the normal differences still apply. The higher contrast on the S20+, Plus, the more vibrance on the S20+, Plus, it's all there and you can pick whichever one you want. I would say I kind of like the S20+, Plus because it's brighter overall. But other than that, really, not a huge difference at all. Now here, in this image, I do prefer the iPhone by quite a bit. Firstly, because it does not have a red overcast all over the image. The S20 Plus has it for some reason, which makes especially the wood panels right there look very weird and just reddish all over, while the iPhone looks much better. Also, it has a lot less lens flare as compared to the S20 Plus, which is kind of odd because usually I've seen that iPhones have a ton of lens flare, but I guess not in this case. So yeah, overall, I do prefer the iPhone by quite a bit. Also, there is a tad bit more detail. It's not a lot, but it is definitely noticeable. Now in this portrait shot, this is kind of a difficult situation because as you can see on the S20 Plus, I'm not particularly well exposed. And the iPhone is doing a particularly good job in terms of handling the balance between the brightness of the background and the foreground, making me as a subject stand out quite a bit. Also the skin tones are miles better than on the S20 Plus. It's quite a huge difference in my opinion and easily my preference goes for the iPhone. Now this image, once again, Similar conditions with the background being slightly brighter than the subject and I would say that neither of them are doing a perfect job overall. I do look pretty dark on both but I'm going to prefer the iPhone just a little bit because I like how it's not making me look super red. Also one weird thing that happened is that you can see my hand on the front it looks super bright on the S20 plus for some reason which just looks, I don't know, super odd, I guess, but yeah, it just makes me shy away from the S20 Plus that much more. Now, the S20 Plus does have two times zoom on portraits, which is, as you can see, just something that everybody should avoid because clearly the amount of grain and over sharpening and just lack of good detail and just how faded it looks, I mean, the complaints just keep lining up and the edge detection also does not look nice. On the iPhone, however, you can just move closer and you can get a tighter shot if you want. There will be slight amounts of distortion which is clearly visible here but even so, the iPhone is clearly the better one here with much better contrast overall, edge detection, colors, yeah all of the things I said before. Easily my preference once again goes to the iPhone. Another portrait shot and here this is a little interesting because both of them are unable to nail the skin tones this time around. It surprises me even more because usually the iPhones do a fantastic job in terms of skin tones but both are giving me this red look which just it looks weird obviously it just looks unrealistic and I don't know why the iPhone in particular screwed up here because I know the S20 Plus has a tendency of reddening my skin a bit but the iPhone I didn't expect that. Now this is once again studio lighting and yes it is two times zoom on the S20 Plus it is a lot better as compared to indoors lighting two times zoom but it's still not good enough because clearly the iPhone has better detail, the overall brightness and the look of the shot is better in my opinion. And even on the S20 when you just move in closer instead of trying to crop in it just looks so much better. Now what about portraits of non-human subjects like Gerald Valentine here and I would say this image was a very good test of how scratch resistant my hand is which is well, it's clearly not amazing at it, but nonetheless, both images do look fairly good and the only difference here is that the iPhone looks a little bit more realistic in terms of my skin color and that's it. The rest of it, the details, the contrast overall, it all looks very nice on both. Slightly higher contrast on the S20 Plus as expected, but what impressed me most is that both of them are able to do this gradual blur on the subject and then over my hand, which is looking very realistic. Now for some selfies and this situation wasn't particularly easy to handle and clearly the iPhone is doing a better job in my opinion because the hard contrast on the S20 Plus it looks a bit too much. I prefer how the iPhone is handling it and just making the highlight roll off slightly mild and it just looks better overall. Also I look really red on the S20 Plus while the iPhone once again doing a better job in terms of skin tones. Now this is a super high dynamic range shot as some may call it and clearly once again the iPhone is doing a better job. It is maintaining the highlights superbly well while the S20 is, is not able to do anything as such. And also you'll notice that the iPhone can go a lot wider 
Now for this portrait selfie, I once again like how the contrast is on the S20 Plus. It does make the contours of my face look a little bit better, but I definitely prefer the skin tones on the iPhone once again. And another thing that I do prefer is that we have much better highlight preservation on my shirt. And the tipping point over which I just chose the iPhone altogether is that we have much better edge detection as you can see. For some reason the S20 Plus decided to include the silhouette from the half done painting in my background and well I don't know why it decided to do that but I took a number of photos the results were the exact same so easily the iPhone is my choice here. Now the one thing that the S20 Plus can do is go fully wide on the selfie camera when taking portrait selfies. And on the iPhone, you cannot do that. I don't know why it's such a weird limitation in my opinion. I mean, being forced to crop in on portrait selfies, it feels a little weird to be honest. Now, finally for selfies and you'll be rid of my face, it is a night mode selfie. Here, I don't like what the iPhone is doing. It has a lot of noise and grain. It is trying to sharpen my face a little too much, which just makes me look really weird to be honest. I look like a plucked chicken for some reason, but nonetheless, I do prefer the S20 Plus, although, Something to note is that the S20 Plus does have super wonky colors because, man, I don't know from where it gathered purple in the scene, it just looks weird. Now, for some rear camera night modes, this one, it's more of a test for lens flare rather than the night mode because it was fairly well lit and night mode, as usual, it does a fair fantastic job of bringing out the details and all that, but Lens flare is definitely controlled better on the S20 Plus, as you can see. It is very faint, especially on the left, while the iPhone is just not even trying to control it almost. Now this was a super, super dark situation and there are two ways to look at it. On one hand, the iPhone looks so much more natural, while the S20 Plus with the colors, it looks a little bit too fake in my opinion. The greens especially and the white balance just does not look appropriate. But you can also see that there is a ton more shadow detail, especially in the trees in the left. And man, it looks fantastic on the S20 Plus, very dynamic. While the iPhone, kind of realistic and, you know, choose whichever one you want. But I think I'll be sticking with the iPhone because the colors just do not play right with my mindset, I guess. Now, this is an interesting situation. This is a streetlight hidden behind some leaves and it was definitely a weird condition and clearly the S20 Plus is doing a better job and although it does not have the most realistic looking colors I still just prefer the overall look and just the amount of shadow detail that we can get. The iPhone on the other hand is like not even trying to expose the shadows. I think it just missed the mark on this one. Now for this ultra white night mode this is where everything falls apart for the iPhone because as you can see the S20 Plus is better in almost every regard because there's a lot more detail on the S20 Plus. You can see it in the trees, in the foreground, so much better. And if you look at the sky, dear God, that over sharpening and there's that weird gradient. I mean, it just does not look good on the iPhone. The ultra wide camera in particular, it needs quite a bit of improvement. But the moment we move on to the main camera, it gets a lot better. The iPhone almost looks a little bit better than the S20 in this situation. But credit where due, the S20 Plus does have higher contrast which to some extent I think I like that. But one thing that really surprised me was that both of their skies have a lot of artifacting. Now this is fairly common on the S20 Plus but on the iPhone not so much because it is famed to have some of the best night mode skies that I've seen so far. And so I just took another picture at another angle and clearly the iPhone 12 is doing a much much better job. It is the cleanest sky. I mean that's period like there is no other phone that I've used so far that has cleaner skies than this. Maybe in further comparisons we'll see something but I sincerely doubt it. The iPhones have some of the best skies that I've seen in any night mode images. Alright now for some ultra low light. This is just a reference image where I'm just taking a normal photograph no night mode here and you can see it is super dark and fairly backlit so it'll be interesting to see how each phone performs here. It's not a realistic situation as such but nonetheless, I do think that it is going to be a very nice test. Now moving on to night mode and here, as you can see, the S20 Plus is doing a fairly better job in my opinion, mainly because it is controlling the highlights miles better than the iPhone 12. 
It's like the iPhone is not even trying to control the highlights, it's just blowing it out for the sake of it and it, it just does not look nice. Moving on to the ultra wide camera, however, in this situation, I would say that the over sharpening is not as visible. It is there. Trust me, the over sharpening is there on the iPhone, but it's not super visible. But on the S20 Plus, the only reason I don't like it is because it is way too blue. That looks very unrealistic and faded overall. I like how the iPhone 12 is maintaining the overall contrast of the image. Although, once again, the highlights are being overexposed on the iPhone, while the S20 Plus, at least in that regard, it is doing a better job. So, that's a wrap for this comparison. And, well, it was interesting to say the least. Now, there are obvious places where each of these cameras can improve. On the S20 Plus, if you want to give us 2 times zoom on the portraits, then please give us an optical zoom, Samsung. But, yeah, other than that, I would say that overall, the S20 Plus has aged fairly well. It does still have some weird looking skin tones and, you know, a red hues here and there. But overall, I'd still say that the S20 Plus is a fantastic camera. On the iPhone, however, it is amazing, clearly. But the ultra wide, it needs some work done because, man, that over sharpening, it looks so unappealing. I do think that until it gets patched, the iPhone's ultra wide camera, it's not going to live up to the hype. But other than that, I definitely think that the iPhone is fantastic for human portraits and stuff like that. If you are in for the realistic type of shots, then without question, the iPhone will impress you. At least it impresses me more than anything else. So with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, do hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I will be seeing you guys later. Cheers.